Today we're in downtown Nicholasville, Kentucky, and we're going to shoot something. So I've got my Brownie Hawkeye Kodak camera loaded up with the uh, 620 film that we rolled last time. This is Plus X125, which is good because uh, this is, uh, this camera, I've already measured the aperture. It's about a 95 millimeter focal length and the aperture comes out to about an F16 equivalent and the shutter speed's around a 125th of a second. That means with our Sunny 16 rule, we're looking at a film speed, something like uh, 25. Well, I don't have 25, I don't have 50, I've got 125. So, uh, sun's going down, so hopefully we'll be up only about one or two stops over, and then we're gonna develop this in a formula that cuts film speed in half. So that should get us right around the right exposure. So, uh, let's just walk around and take some pictures. Now that everything is shot, let's go ahead and take the film out of the camera. We'll put it onto our reel and develop it. Now, this camera has about a 95 millimeter focal length. And I measured the size of the opening and mathematically we come up to something close to an F16. The shutter speed, I used a Calumet shutter speed tester and found that the shutter speed is about a 25th of a second. This particular model only has two speeds, either instant or with this up, a bulb setting. So the instant at 1 25th of a second at F16 means sunny 16 rule, a 25 speed film would need to be used. That's 25 ISO, not DIN. So if I'm using something faster, which I did, I used Plus X, which is a 125 speed film, I'm roughly two stops overexposed. Now, the weather was slightly overcast later in the day, so that may have taken us down maybe as much as a stop, but for that other stop of uh, excessive speed, what I'm using is a film developer that cuts the film speed in half. So I am using ABC Pyro. I'm using a dilution of one to one to one to 14. So if you're unfamiliar with that formula, it's also published as Kodak D1. It is a three part solution, parts A, B, and C, and you dilute them with water. Now the standard tray dilution would be one part of each and then seven parts water. For a tank, it would be one part of each and 11 parts water. I'm doing what is recommended in the film developing cookbook uh, or the uh, the darkroom cookbook, sorry, um, version four, the, the latest edition, which is to develop in a tank at one to one to one stock solution and 14 parts water. So it's a little bit more dilute. This will um, is give me a little bit more controlled uh, uh, developing time. Now the time, it's a guess. I haven't tested it. It says eight to 14 minutes. I'm going to split it in the middle, do 11. Uh, if you are wanting to try a formula such as this at home, uh, get that book and it tells you how to mix up one liter of working solution, uh, as opposed to most books, which give you a one liter of each stock. And then if you find you don't like it, you have a bunch of stock made up that you're not gonna use. If you've never made this before, 
then you might want to start with just a one liter working solution instead of making four liters of each stock solution just to try it out. I am doing the one to one to one to 14 part uh, dilution for tank development. So we're going to start with 750 milliliters of water. To that, we're going to add 6.6 .6 grams of sodium sulfite. To that, add 3.5 grams of pyrogallic acid. Make sure you have good ventilation and you're wearing gloves when handling the powder. When that's fully dissolved, add six milliliters of a 10% potassium bromide solution. Finally, add 5.2 grams of sodium carbonate. Once that's fully dissolved, top off with more water to the one liter mark. Once you have everything put together, you're going to develop this just like normal. Now, a few of you have noticed in my other videos that I have a big, uh, rather vigorous uh, agitation routine. I use the uh, Kodak agitation that they recommend, which is um, five agitations every five or four or five seconds every 30 seconds. So it's one inversion every second. With a pyro, you will definitely get streaks if you do that. So it needs to be much more gentle. So four slow, gentle uh, inversions in 10 seconds, once every minute is perfectly fine. Then just do your, your developing just like normal. But this developer formula does cut your film speed just about in half. So for me, it's going to work. It is a little bit grainy, but since this is a 125 speed film and I'm only going to make a print, um, maybe a seven inch square, six inch square, something like that on eight by 10 paper, I'm really not worried about grain whatsoever. Let's see how it looks. Well, we definitely got some images. Let's see, get the light on there. And it looks not too bad, actually. My shadows are just dense enough. My highlights have some density. So let's hang this up. Ugh. And uh, let this dry. All right, we'll be back in a few minutes and uh, see how they sprint. And here's the print that I made. I went ahead and made a second one because I still had a couple pieces of paper left. They are mm, moderate contrast. I bumped each of these up to a three filter. Um, this one took to that filter better. This one was pretty monochromatic to begin with. Uh, didn't have a whole lot of contrast range. So being a roll film, it kind of suffered from a little too short of development time. Of course, I could have printed with a higher filter, but I ran out of paper. This one, however, it turned out okay. What I do see in all the shots, and it's just part of that camera, is sort of soft focus. And that's because it's a single lens element. It doesn't have the complex uh, construction of modern camera lenses with multiple pieces of glass in order to really make the image sharp. So this is a single piece of glass. This gives a workable lens. It still has a lot of barrel distortion. I do notice that in this. Um, and the edges are definitely blurred. It's not a sharp lens, not a lot of coverage. Uh, but even in the, sh the center, it's not super sharp. But I mean, this is, it's an old, cheap camera. They weren't meant to be high quality. That's why we have better cameras out there, but it's fun to use. And with uh, re-rolling your film to 620, it's easy to use. Some of these cameras can take 120, mine can't. So re-rolling works pretty well. We're gonna try some other antique cameras in the future, see how those work just for fun. Um, in the meantime, if you wanna make some prints, get out there, get yourself an old camera, roll up some film, and just take some pictures. So thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what kind of cameras you like to use. If I have one, I might actually even try to use it for a video.